Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. I'm Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, your host, and this is episode 279. It is uh, October, almost said August, October 18th. You're watching it on the 19th or later. We're closing in on Halloween. Every game in the world's got their own freaking Halloween events going. We're not covering any of them on this show. So don't worry about it. I'm not here to give you a list of all the Halloween events. The games you play are doing something for Halloween. Go have fun. Yeah, that's all we've got to say on that, because we've got a lot of what-the-fuckery to talk about today. And joining me, Mr. Jason Winter, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. I would just like to say that I have never worked a 100-hour week at MMO Bomb. This is in, true. in fact, I'm not even sure I work 100 hours in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't want to hear that. No, that's... Wait. No, don't tell me that. Oh, <laughs> tell, <okay. laughs> Damn it. tell other people. Nobody tell Mike. <laughs> don't tell me that. Also on the line, Mr. Troy Blackburn. What's up, New Pritch? Dude, I got some what the fuckery as well. I got Bless Online installed on my computer right now, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> oh, and we're going to start right off with that, because two weeks ago, yeah, last week, there wasn't shit all for news, and I didn't want to force a show. Even Jason and I were like, well, what can we just speculate or talk about or have fun? And we came up with, well, we'd have one topic. Yeah, we're not doing a show 40 minutes on one topic. We've done that before. and we It wasn't even that big news anyway. Uh, so, yeah, no show last week. Two weeks ago, we talked about Bless Online, now going free to play. They didn't make the six-month mark. And, of course, Troy couldn't join us for that show. So we will talk about that today as we get started with the news. All right, so what's up first? Uh, some Bless Online. Now, before we get to the actual news portion of Bless Online, because there was some news on that front this week, I feel, Jason, we would be remiss if we did not let Troy weigh in. The game is going free-to-play. It's going free-to-play in five days from this recording, October 23rd. That's when it's also coming out of early access, an early access that did not last the entire six months minimum that they had announced early access would last. The packs are changing from Founders Packs to, you know, other packs once the game launches, but you can still get the Founders Packs up until the 23rd. All in all, lots of changes to the game. Some people are saying, hey, initial reviews were very well deserved and very, you know, the game was bad and had issues. There's some people, now a little fan base, not a huge one, as Jason likes to point out with Steam charts. Not a huge one, but there is not a little... 500 concurrent right now. Yeah. Right, well, you know, okay, for MMORPGs, it's not that great, but we've seen worse. <laughs> um, Troy... I got to let you go for a moment or two. Your thoughts when you saw the free-to-play news. Um, please, Internet, tell me again how I wasn't right <laughs> months and months ago. Please keep <laughs> telling me that I, oh, there, Troy can't say he was right. It's It's been not even six months. We're going free-to-play. I'm pretty sure I said six months. I have to go back on those cast and make sure. I'm pretty sure I said free-to-play within six months. You did, and I remember <laughs> that you did because I made the point of, wait, Troy, they said early access would last at least six months. They can't make it free-to-play earlier than that, or you piss off, you risk pissing off the people that actually bought Founders Packs, anticipating mm -hmm. an early access of at least six months. And you said, no, 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 they're, they're going to do it. I will tell you, Troy, that there have been a lot of YouTube comments on the last show in particular saying, oh my god, it's disgusting how right Troy was. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny because i enjoy being right but at the same time I'm, I'm not i'm not happy for the people who actually enjoy the game and bought into those founders packs and got suckered into that like i, I feel i feel really i feel deeply for those folks uh but you know saw it coming saw it coming the signs were there the signs were there and, and I can't wait to get into some of this news bit we're going to talk about here in a minute because those signs <laughs> were there too. Um, it, it's all been there from since the beginning. It was it was laid out. It was like it was like a book that you could just read and be like, "Here's the failure. Here's where it's going." And, and guess what? Guess what's next? And I said this part too at the time. Pay to win is coming. Maybe not at free to play launch. Pay to win is coming. Get get ready for it. Yeah, I mean, Jason, 
admittedly, we talked about this two weeks ago, by their own standards, they didn't want to go free to play because yeah. they were worried about their ability to not get greedy and, and go into pay to win. They didn't want to be they, tempted. Tempted. That's the word. They don't want to be tempted into pay to win. So now they will be, apparently. Yeah. I, I remember going on a rant about how they couldn't control themselves yes. from putting pay to win into their game. Well, when they put the word tempted on there, we were like, what What are you, eight? <laughs> <laughs> like you pay can't to win go, is the devil. It's literally the devil. He's going to tempt you like you know, hey, Jesus or something. Hey, guys, know. we're we're not going to do pay to win. Uh, okay. How hard was that? <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Because it's a sales pitch. It's the reason they're getting you to buy. The reason they justify their... Somebody's phone ringing that isn't mine? Yeah, yeah, it's ours over here. Yes, it's it's not mine! (laughs) For once. For once, yeah. Uh, All right. usually answers it isn't here, so, you know, just Ah, keep ringing. Go ahead. So, getting into the news that happened this week on Bless... um, Troy, the developers have something for you know, have have a thought about people like you and people that played the game more than you, but maybe now share the same opinions. Uh, and their opinions is basically uh, if you played Bless and you didn't like it, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you did not understand what early access was for. You didn't get it. I hate when all games do this, Jason. When they mm-hmm. launch into early access and the only way to get into it is money and they advertise, hey, you're going to help us develop, you're going to help us develop, you're going to help us develop. And then when the product is even less than typical early access standards, which I think are generally, for most people, you know, maybe people that aren't on the pulse of how early access and betas work these days as we are, maybe your general... Cash, more casual gamer. All right, maybe there's some confusion on early access and launch. It, it, if I got to pay for it, it should be ready to go. I think generally people that are watching this type of show, for instance, they know there's going to be a bit of a quality dink as you go into mm-hmm. early access, as things get fleshed out, fixed, added. But Bless Online, I think, even surpassed the expected <laughs> amount of dink that went on there. Um, and the team... I hate when all companies do this. They turn around and they say, well, guys, it was early access. Why is everybody so upset? We said it wasn't done. We said you were we were going to be developing and stuff. That's not what we're talking about when us yeah. players are bitching, you know, uh, about how bad an early access is. I mean, there were parts of this game that were unplayable bad. <laughs> And so they kind of stress that their early access was a chance to continue engaging with the player base and that the game was not finished. All right. Jason, typically we've seen that response from other companies. So, all right. As much as I may hate it, it's a pretty canned typical response. However, generally we aren't talking about a game that has launched umpteen other times in the world over the course of five years and failed in those areas for specific reasons that still seem to be plaguing the game today. Their exact quote, however, many players didn't share the team's view that early access was still a time for development and changes for a game that's launched multiple times in multiple regions and been sent back for a lot of the same incomplete aspects that it's it's getting dinged for right now. Bless Online wasn't a final finished, uh, final polished product as much as the community had believed it would be. You know, like a game that's launched four or five times, you might generally think <laughs> is a little further to lo- along that chain. Leading to a mismatch of expectations for early access between the development team and the players. Jason, I gotta say, I was pretty pissed when I read this. So, you know who else was pissed? It was Omega Lull in our comments who said, you, who said that I didn't understand English because I, I wrote leading to a mismatch of expectations. <laughs> Thankfully, three other commenters called out and said, dude, that, that's what he's quoting from the developers. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and it, it's also a lie, straight up to say that early access is meant for development time or whatever. Mm-hmm. If it were, then you wouldn't charge people for it. Especially for a game that's going to, well, technically, I guess technically with this one, they didn't know it was going to be free to play or something like that, so I can kind of get that. But if, if it weren't, if all you want is players to help you develop your game, don't charge them for it. 
then you'll get lots more people playing it and lots more people developing it. Or don't that's release how, in how, Russia and then close down. And well, you know, pretty, Korean pretty, server pretty, just recently closed. And yeah, I mean that's another aspect of it in terms of bless. But all of the games do this, especially a oh, game yeah. that plans to be free to play at some point. Again, because I've said it before, early access is just about getting money early. That's the yeah. only point of it. Because back in the day, you'd have a beta for an MMO or something. Maybe it was a closed beta or something like that, or even an open beta. Like we could say, like you know, like Pyrus does with its games or whatever. Call them betas or whatever you want. Um, yeah, they don't charge you to get in because they want testers to go in and do it. But you actually want money, you do this, oh, yep. you do it this way. And then you're somehow shocked and amazed <laughs> that people are upset that a product they paid money for isn't very good. Why would anybody be upset about that? I can't understand why. I've said it before on this show, Troy. I'll say it again. And I know it dates me. But I remember, and you gentlemen remember, it's going to date all three of us, mm -hmm. when a beta test, you got paid for. You got paid I mean, it wasn't much in most cases. A couple bucks or some type of arrangement on getting a free copy of the game. You know, oddball stuff like that, depending on how big the developer was. But you got paid. To be the honestly, beta tester. Honestly, I don't remember getting that much level of stuff. I remember you get like you'll get like a free hat or something when the game launches or something like that. Some other bonus like that. I don't remember Typic getting like a typically full most game. of the ones I participated in. It was you got a copy of the game when when it Maybe came that goes out. Back. They, Maybe you go back a little farther. I didn't really get into beta testing until like 2010, 2011 or something. Oh like that, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. This this is yeah, much earlier really than back that. Like World of Warcraft days. And yeah, I don't. I don't and, go that at far least back. then you were invited and didn't pay sixty dollars to. Test yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Even in 2010, it was random invite type deal. Yeah. So Troy, I I gotta let you chime in here because I think what NeoWiz is saying is all of your venom towards this game, you personally, Troy, mm -hmm. it's on you, bad boy. It's <laughs> your fault. Yes, because I didn't understand what early access was for, and and I totally didn't get and understand why you know what what I was supposed to be expecting and what other players were supposed to be expecting when they paid full price for these founders packs for a game that had been out for multiple years in multiple regions, and there were all these promises of what was going to be in the game when it came over to the Western servers and what was going to be there to improve and make it for us. And how it was going to be the next great MMO and it was going to change the genre and give us something new to play. I totally misunderstood all of that. <laughs> and, and, and I went too far with it. And I guess I should just be down on bended knee right now apologizing to NeoWiz for misunderstanding what this game was and what it was going to be and all these great improvements they were going to make and why we were paying full price for early access. I'm sorry that I misunderstood that this wasn't going to be a complete game. And that this that I thought this was going to be a game that people might actually enjoy, even if it wasn't for me, and that I didn't realize it was going to be an absolute dumpster fire. And I'm sorry. Oh, wait, I did realize it was going to be an absolute dumpster fire and that people were going to be screwed because they were paying full price for a game that had already been out for multiple years and had launched in multiple regions and had failed miserably in multiple, multiple regions. Oh, wait. I feel like maybe Neo Wish should be apologizing to me personally <laughs> for trying to make people believe that I was not correct when, oh, look, six months later, look who's correct. This guy. Maybe Neo, Neo Wiz can uh, bless you with some insight here, Troy. Mm. Uh, uh, time is money. Apparently, they're about to try to. Time is money has right. by far what I think is the best comment on our posting of this, where time is money. They just posted five fantastic words. What a glorious dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> Great comment from time is money on the piece. Yeah, I and I hate this excuse generally. And, and I get where it comes from. Like I said, the more casual player that maybe, hey, I shelled out $30, I expect a completed game. I think people that were buying into Bless fall more on the spectrum of players like us who understand there's going to be challenges, there's going to be changes, there's going to be development, there's going to be things that aren't complete. I'll buy in because I want to play it early and, and maybe help out with the testing or maybe just because I want to play early. I, I think more of us were the ones that bought those founder packs than somebody just, you know, a 14-year-old generally just sifting through Steam. Oh, there's a new MMO. All right, yeah, I'll pony up 30 bucks and check it out. Uh, I hate this excuse generally. I really, really hate 
this con- I can usually look past it as just PR bullshit. This one I really, really hate because Bless has launched so many damn times in other regions. But I will say this. The first look is coming. <laughs> it will be a dual first look as promised. And I'm going to make a prediction here. The free-to-play cast fans will love the first look. I'm going to love the first look. People who don't if religiously... If you don't love the first look, you misunderstood what the first look was supposed to be. Exactly. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> it's going to be weird because the free-to-play cast fans are probably going to love the first look because I'm going to be giving Troy so much grief. Um, but people who don't watch the free-to-play cast are, one, they're going to think I'm an idiot, right? <laughs> because I'm going to be pointing out all the great things this game does as if it's the first game that's ever done these things. So they're going to think I'm generally just an idiot. They're going to think Troy is miserable and angry for no reason because I'm (laughs) pissing Troy off as we go. So I don't know how well our first look's going to do since it's going to cater towards the free-to-play cast fans a little more than just general first looks do. But we'll see. We'll have a good time. Troy, I'll let you know that I spent, I think, maybe just an hour or two playing around in it earlier this week uh, because I I really don't want to show off too much early beginning game stuff. There's a lot of that content already out there. So I wanted to get a few levels in. I think I'm only like 10 or 11, and I've just done main story. But just so I get a feel for like the taming system and all that stuff because yes you can have pets and things like that uh so we will cover as much of it as we can without the first look being nine days long Uh, and i hope you free to play cast fans love it because we're probably gonna get some down votes from people who don't understand what we're doing (laughs) uh moving on Speaking of other games that uh, that I do play, Final Fantasy XIV, uh, Jason, we got some free to play news on fourteen, right? Maybe you know, once a once <clears throat> once a year or so we get this. So someone someone asked you know, Yoshi P about free to play, and he feels compelled to respond. It was almost exactly a year ago that he had the same question, and we reported on it. And this year, someone else asked him about it. Someone uh, for a Korean website, apparently. They basically asked him, you know, do you think 414 can go free to play? And the first words out of his mouth, at least the first words printed in the interview, were absolutely not. <laughs> then he went off another like five paragraphs, but still. See, here's what I want next year when we do this. I want uh, <laughs> I want the article's headline to be something about the absolutely not anniversary. So we could like <laughs> call it the fourth annual absolutely not anniversary. Uh, yeah. Final Fantasy fourteen going free to play. And I don't think there's any surprises there. And he, you're right. He elaborated some more on the very typical reasons. They like the, having the subscription so they know their income. They, they can budget accordingly. The fan base is big enough that they can afford to do this. They don't want to introduce elements and change the way they do game design to have to cater towards that type of model. Generally, he thinks it's kind of greedy to begin with. He's kind of more in the um, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto uh, view of of free to play when it comes to that no surprises here right i mean i wasn't as a final they're Fantasy actually a fan. well-developed successful mmo mm-hmm. <laughs> right i mean no surprises from this one right uh if no, anything it's a little bit of a surprise that he did deny it so completely when last year again he'd said yeah we would do it if 80 to 90 percent of our players wanted it so like this seems to not this seems to close the door completely on it not that i expected it would be Anytime soon, or that players were clamoring for it, but right, right. Usually, usually, game developers just never say never. You know how that is. It's like, again, it's the whole if if our players really wanted, you know, you know, naked elves. If they or, ever put naked elves free to play game, ten years from now, this these these two words will absolutely get brought brought back up at that point. This is, this is the point. It's like no matter how, like five years from now, if we write about 14, right, whether 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 they go free to play or not, I can refer to one article or the other. Right. It, so it, what you said. it won't be that like, hey, it's eight years later. Obviously, the player base has moved on, and now it's time to go. It'll be like, no, he said absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> eight years ago, he said, we were promised. <laughs> <laughs> he said absolutely not. I mean, Final Fantasy XI never went free to play. I don't see any reason yeah. that fourteen needs to at any point. Uh, and also, I feel like at the end of the day, as much as I love Naoki Yoshida, it's not going to be his call. Uh, that's just my feeling on it. <laughs> <laughs> is that if the game ever got into a position where it was a viable option and one they had to consider, I think the decision would be generally taken out of his hands, although I'm sure he would have, you know, 
ample input into it. Um, what else do we got? Troy, Zenimax, uh, Elder Scrolls Online, another buy to play. We're not talking about that particular game, but Zenimax is hiring and they're looking for somebody with MMO development experience for what they say is a new IP. A new IP. That's maybe the most interesting part is you, you could always look back at sort of the, the titles that the Zenimax umbrella company as a whole sort of own and what you could do with that. And you got things like Fallout 76 coming out and they're saying MMO and a new IP. That, that sounds interesting at first, but also uh, I, I don't think they included MMORPG in that. I think it just said MMO. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I would be shocked at this point. They've got one successful MMORPG running right now. They've managed to to improve that game and really do a 180 on what its reputation was when it first launched. Make it successful on console especially. And they've got a successful MMORPG running. I would be shocked to see them try to do another traditional what we think of as MMORPG. So for me, I, I'm thinking this is probably more along the lines of a battle royale. I know, I know, I know. Or a shooter or something like that. But they didn't specify, so we don't actually know. And they say new IP, which really makes me lean more towards something like that. Right, and new IP, I mean, so that you get the usual suspects when Bethesda or Zenimax announces a project. You, the usual suspects that come to mind, we can take them off the board, right? Fallout, gone. Elder Scrolls, gone. Those those familiar titles that are in the Bethesda Zenimax library, uh, the they're not in there. That's obviously not a new IP. But sticking with new IP, Jason, there is something that we do know about and have for a while, even though we haven't known a lot about it, uh, that might be what this is. Are you talking about Starfield? I am. Yeah, okay. That, that was a game that they just barely teased at, uh, at E3. It's apparently going to be a sci-fi game. It's an RPG. That much is confirmed, but there's no talk of that being an MMO, just as there's no talk of the new MMO being an RPG. So it's possible they're the same thing, but you'd, you'd wonder why they would be, maybe maybe, maybe why they'd be so cryptic in the announcement. Like, why wouldn't they just say, hey, to work on Starfield? Because they've already announced that. So right. you don't know. And mm -hmm. and I, I do agree. I, I agree that I think it's going to be a shooter or some, at least some kind of PvP type game because, you know, as I mentioned later on, they want someone with strong te technical knowledge of Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Yep, so we're going cross-platform. Yeah, if it's going to be on consoles, you'd think something a little more action-y or you know, PvP, that kind of action. So I don't know. Elder Scrolls does very well on the on the console. That's true, yeah. So it'll be interesting to watch. I mean, that's all we have for you on that one is that there's a job posting. Credit to Massively OP. That's where we saw the piece. We did not dig that one up ourselves. So credit where credit is due. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on it. And I'm sure there'll be tons of speculation going forward. Uh, and if it is going to be some sort of shooter type game, again, the, the leaning would be maybe towards being a free to play. So, you know, yeah, maybe we'll cover yeah. more. Maybe. Uh, before we head on to two final pieces of news here, Epic Games is suing somebody again. <laughs> uh, and surprise, surprise. This one surprise, really deserves it. Surprise, surprise. It's over Fortnite. Do you think so? Oh, yeah. So here's what's going. I, mm, I don't know. I think we disagree here. He's selling well, cheats. We, see, but I didn't. Is he the one actually selling them? That's where. Well, let's let's lay out what's going on real quick here first. Okay. Epic, yeah, then we can argue. Because yeah, I'm on Jason's side on this. Uh, well, I I'm on. If he's the one selling them, I'm absolutely on your sides. I didn't get the impression that he was. So we'll clear that up in a second. Um, Epic Games obviously been suing people left and right over this anyway, over Fortnite. So Brandon Lucas, who goes by the name Golden Mods on YouTube, uh, has used Fortnite cheats in his videos, linking to sites that sell cheats, and they're not cheap. They're like $55 a month or $300 for lifetime <laughs> subscription. So we're talking... <laughs> When I came to that Whoa. He calls them magical powers, by the way. They're suing Lucas and another YouTuber that he sometimes partners up with known as Eccentric for copyright infringement, breach of contract, and torturous interference. So uh, me interfering with a contract that Jason has with another third party in some way that causes that contract to have economic hardship. Uh, I'm not involved in it, but Jason and Troy have a contract together and I'm screwing around with it, defaming them and all kinds of stuff or, or anything that would interfere with the contract. Um, now, some videos have been removed, probably more going to be, but yeah, Jason, this is the part that 
I, I didn't understand and kind of think that I, I might disagree with you. Copyright infringement, breach of contract, and tortuous interference. Okay. Going, going. I looked at the website we linked to, and they have some quotes from the actual complaint by Epic. Go ahead. The first one says, Lucas is operating these websites and selling these cheats and accounts for his own personal enrichment. Then I'm on your side. There if you if Lucas yeah. is selling these things, then yeah, hey, the, absolutely to me, this is a no-brainer lawsuit. Uh, the way it was, it was written, I didn't know if he yeah, was selling that, them yeah. or not, in which case I thought it was, hey, somebody found a cheat, they like it, they were boosting its signal, and Epic was suing them for copyright infringement and sure. breach of contract and not the person selling the thing. Okay, so if Brandon is selling it, then I'm on your, your side, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Lawsuit galore. Go for it. Troy, what are your thoughts? I think, and we talked about this the last time Epic talked about suing somebody for cheats. Um, I feel like whether this kid was selling or not, maybe a, a straight up lawsuit uh, in the in the terms that they're doing this one, maybe isn't applicable. But I feel like these game companies should have some form of recourse for people who are promoting uh, cheats and putting them on a pedestal. I mean, they're altering the game. They're affecting the customer base. They're affecting Epic's bottom line have to be. There are definitely people who walk out away from these games because there are cheaters and hackers in those games doing things. I think there should absolutely be some sort of recourse in some shape, form, or fashion that Epic should have against folks who so blatantly and publicly uh, promote and encourage this type of activity. Oh, and I don't care if you wanna, Oh, I'm yeah, just a absolutely. kid. You, you shouldn't yeah. you're, you're 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 breaking the game you're doing things you shouldn't be doing i guess in terms of service it's, there's got to be some some point where there's some form of legality involved in that when you're going in and changing codes of the games to make it function differently for you than it does for everybody else there should be some form of recourse whether you're selling these things or not oh and that's i agree with you up until that last sentence if you're the one selling them or making them then yes, because you are violating a number of different things. You are, and I'm no doubt there. If I happen to find a cheat for a game, and I start using it, and I like it, and I signal boost it. Granted, I'm a schmuck, and I'm a jerk, and you know I'm not disputing any of that. My life is probably uh, not as good as it could be if I have to feel the need to do this um, <laughs> and, and signal boost it. I give you all that. I'm not the, the pillar of gaming virtue when I indulge in this stuff. But I am not doing anything inherently damaging to the company oh, yes, myself. No, yes, I'm not. Not yes, to the point are. that you yes, can take me are. to court for something like, first off, copyright infringement no i haven't infringed on a single copyright now if you want to issue dmc takedowns or copyright strikes against my youtube videos on the grounds that i'm using your assets like some other companies do for other circumstances hey i'm not going to sit there and argue with that i may think it's petty but i understand why epic did it because the message hurts but is that really any different than using your assets and posting a review that epic doesn't like I'm still doing the same amount of damage there, potentially, with a review. I'm boosting the bad flaws about the games, the things I don't like about it, and I'm encouraging people not to support it, not to do anything with it financially. Granted, there's that small difference that mm -hmm. is I'm still encouraging Jason to go in to the game and do something illegal. But you can't sue me for copyright infringement if I don't have anything to do with the design or use of the program. You do have recourse as a company for that. Ban my account. Find the accounts that may be using those exploits that I advertised or signal boosted and ban those accounts. I don't argue with you on any of those, but to say that somebody cheating on Fortnite and posting a YouTube video saying, hey, I found this cheat uh, and I kind of dig it, but hey, use at your own risk because obviously it's a cheat. Ban the accounts. To say that that person should be eligible to be sued, I think is silly. It all depends on how the EULAs are listed or written because they always say you can't, oh. can't alter game files and so forth. Right, depends but I'm not the one altering that. the game files. And as long as my download well, doesn't physically alter the game files, it's client side, then fine. Well, I, I don't know the technical aspect of it entirely, but if you're downloading a cheat to change how the game works, and it seems like you're doing something. Right. But 
But yeah, I mean, I, th- I thought at first you were saying even the. I thought you were even against them, like banning the account or something. But no, yeah, that, no, no, no. That's what I thought at first. Yeah. No, 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 no. If you're cheating, you should be banned. If you're violating the EULA, you should be banned. Okay, fine. I mean, we were. I was even on Terra's side for banning third party people that were using third party apps. The the because even though they had no influence on gameplay, they were you know things like. GPS trackers and things like that. Uh, I was on their side because you know what? It is your U- your EULA agreement. Go ahead and enforce it. The only gripe I had there was you didn't enforce it for three years. Then you decided you <laughs> wanted to enforce it. That doesn't make sense to me. Ban them. Find accounts that are using it. Ban them. Make the experience better for everybody. My only disagreement with you, Troy, was you can't go sue Jason because he posted a video about how much he likes a cheat. If he's stupid enough to do that, go find his account and ban it. Mm. Mm. I don't. I don't disagree that he shouldn't be banned. I, I, uh, and I also understand. No, you just want him sued and thrown in the brig. I, I do. I do <laughs> want him sued, and I want him to pay fines for it. I do. Sue a teenager for like five hundred dollars or something, and that'll be enough to make him stop doing shit. Oh yeah, my just... god, you guys are silly. You guys are silly. Put it in the comments below if you think cheaters should be in jail. <laughs> I'm not saying jail. I'm saying a five hundred dollar fine or something like that. You know, that's good. Yeah, twenty I'll, years I'll of hard time for they cheating in Fortnite. Five hundred dollar fine. Yeah. Well, it is in there, Eula. You mean those no, drastically can't. not legally enforceable documents that have been struck yeah. down in no, courts you know over and over? The worst punishment will be if you remember the movie. I think it was it Hackers. I think <laughs> like it shows at the very beginning this kid who's like twelve years old. He's been found guilty of something. And he's like not allowed to have internet for five years or whatever. <laughs> that would be the ultimate punishment for these kids. <laughs> you guys are silly. Uh, before we move on, Jason, real quick, you got to check out Breach. What were your thoughts? Yeah, so Breach. For those of you who don't know, it's a uh, upcoming, upcoming MMO ish type game made by a uh, couple of people who were you know big time at uh, Star Wars Old Republic at Bioware. Uh, Dallas Dickinson is the studio head. Uh, Gabe Amantangelo, he's the uh, uh, director of design, I think I don't remember his exact title. Sorry, Gabe. But um, it's a PvE kind of game. Generally, you have four people and they're trying to go through like little dungeons, which are based on like real life scenario, real life worlds, uh, real life locations. The story being that some, you know, the veil demon or whatever is breached the veil into the real world, is unleashing hell and so forth and monsters and whatnot. So you go through these different rooms, you kill monsters, you fight occasional bosses and so on. You get loot, rinse, repeat, so on and so forth. Now, the thing that makes it a little different and interesting is that another player can actually control the Veil Demon. Yeah, and we talked about this on the show. They're like the DM kind of to a certain extent. Yeah, he's this kind of shadowy presence. He'll go around the battlefield. You can actually see him around. You can't hit him or anything. But as that player, you can then toss out traps to do things to players. You can also take over boss monsters directly and start using them to attack players and be like a true PvP kind of thing. Um, and that goes on. Like I said, you do that for a session of about like four or five rooms. It is each session takes about 15 minutes. You're, the players are trying to complete objectives. The veil demons trying to stop them. So as you play, you'll get points based on whether you complete objectives, whether you complete the, uh, the hard point, hard, uh, hard mode objectives and so forth. And at the end, you know, whoever scores the most, whether it's the players, the, the heroes, or the, cause they're all players. I keep trying to not say that. But the, the good guys are the veil demon. You know, you'll get points. You'll get based on. You'll get uh, more loot based on how you did. And the thing that really sets it apart, the thing that they're really driving home, is all the variety involved. In this. Like when you start up a match, there are going to be seven boss monsters you'll have to face throughout it. Now the veil demon is a good player is going to pick three of them, and then four of them are determined randomly. All of them are based on the area. Like okay. if you're playing in, so it's thematic. Like in, yeah, like in when I played nature. in Egypt, they were like Egyptian gods. Like I faced gotcha. uh, Anubis was one of them, or something like that. Japan was more like whatever kind of wacky Japanese type stuff, tentacle monsters. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and the other point in the variety, the variety aspect of it is there are different veil demons. They have to say, there are six different veil demons, each with their own powers and so forth. On the hero side, they have eighteen different heroes, which wow. fall into kind of the classes you'd expect. You know, tank, damage, healer, you know, that sort of thing. Different hybrid stuff. And they all have a pretty good amount of customization you can pick during it, too. You can try to make some attacks better than others, you know, concentrate more on your damage or your healing or whatever. You equip that stuff during the game. During the match, you'll actually have uh, individual, a few little passive abilities you can get during the game. So it allows for a lot of different builds. That's something they're really trying to stress, is all the variety, all the different builds and strategies that they can go throughout this. And 
especially trying to make it because they, they know you know how unlike uh unlike NeoWiz, they know how a modern game is built. <laughs> and they're actually trying to make it something that you can actually play for a long time without getting bored from it. They want to have that variety in there. And they also want to put in they, they're making the progression very horizontal so you don't have to worry about, oh, I haven't played for six months. How am I going to catch up with my friends? Well, you don't really have to because you can generally jump right back in. So yeah, they, they're taking a lot of the lessons I think they learned from the MMO world and improving on that while also, you know, I should say taking those lessons and then also improving on them to try to make something a little more modern and a little more uh, acceptable to a, a current audience. So it's really interesting the way they're doing it. And it looks uh, kind of interesting. I feel like they aren't, you know, taking lessons with them. I feel like they're doing what they wanted to do with <laughs> well, yeah, Star Wars that. before EA said, no, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I, I think it doesn't exactly match with the MMORPG kind of yeah, setting. I they did, they had the other game they were working on. I don't remember the name of it, but yeah, they're working on that. And this is basically that done again, just with a different company. This so. one's really short for me. I, I was interested in Breach when we first heard the announcements about it. I am more interested in Breach now, having read your article. I can't wait to get my hands on this. Troy, what are your thoughts? These, and this isn't the exact same thing as a lot of the other asymmetrical games that we've had over the years, but these asymmetrical games, they always sound really cool. Yeah. Uh, when they're first in development and we're talking about them, it's like, oh, you know, me against all my friends. But they well, never except for Evolve, really found... because we had 90 things besides the game to discuss <laughs> as they were advertising that. <laughs> but it just, it never seems to find, like, really grasp an audience long term so far. Um, so I have trepidations about that because just yeah. because that asymmetrical, just, there's not really a game that's really, really knocked it out of the park with that. So I think the fact that they don't make it straight up PvP and straight up opposing the other guys, I think that's going to help them a little bit as opposed yeah. to. Like Evolve, where you're trying to fight each other. So. Right. Yeah, this feels different enough that I feel like it has a better shot than some of the others, but I'm just, 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 just a little cautious on it. Uh, before we slide over and do the bombs, Jason, you also did a first look for Maple Story 2, and there's already Maple Story 2 fans on YouTube mad at you because you didn't cover every minute detail and oh you skipped God. things in a first look video. <laughs> How dare you? Jeez. And there's a ton in that game. Like, yeah. I, I, I could have done a three hour first look and not got it. It was already long. half yeah. an hour long. And when I was watching it, I was like, yeah, I mean, he's got to skip some of this stuff because yeah, he'll be here for days. It's a first yeah. look. So, I actually have thought of doing like a follow up video just of all the mini games or something like that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that someday. Let us know in the comments below if you want me to do a, a first look video on the mini on the mini game. What's so. your What's your overall impression? I mean, I don't don't go don't break the game down. If you want to check out Maple Story Two, check out the first look video. But generally, none of us are really Maple Story guys from the original. Did mm -hmm. two suck you in enough that you might want to check it out some more besides the first look video? Yeah, you know, here's how much it sucked me in that I actually did play it last night after I already <laughs> done the first look. So I'm still playing around with it. It's kind of like my easy late night if I'm watching a stream on one channel there you go this is something i could do and not have to really focus a whole lot on but yeah i mean i kind of like it it's 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 probably it's like it's one of like we've talked about this a long time ago a simple grindy game they can just kind of turn my brain off whack stuff play some mini games just kind of enjoy it very casual like i'm not going to probably get into whatever whatever they have for hardcore rating end game or whatever but there's a lot to do even if you never do that i think so awesome all right let's slide over do the weekly bombs Troy, you can go first, sir. Uh, a bomb to bless online being on my computer. My yep. goodness, your fault. I <laughs> had a feeling that was going to be it. Uh, Jason, you're up. I'm giving a tentative dub bomb to to Valve because because just before we got on just before we got on this cast, I found an article which says Dota 2 now dynamically discloses loot box odds in game. Mm. I'm going to write it up. It's probably already on the site actually. You know, as as, as this video is posted, but it says here in fact the uh, I've got the the actual Dota blog says, is regarding a patch, says we've also taken this opportunity to simplify and rework the way we calculate escalating odds for this treasure and going forward. You can now click on the escalating odds arrow next to each of the rare, very rare, or extremely rare drops to see the exact odds of receiving them based on how many you've already opened. So I want to look into that and see exactly see how exact they are talking about exact. Because a few a few weeks ago, EA said, "Oh yeah, we disclose odds in mm -hmm. FIFA packs now." You have a less than one percent chance of getting the super rare thing. That doesn't mean shit. Right. Less than one percent. Yeah. I have a less than one percent chance of winning the lottery, but they still have to tell me it's one in thirty-five billion. Or right. <laughs> see, I want to look this up and see exactly how it is. But for the moment, I'll give it if it's really what it seems to be. 
give a tentative da bomb. All right, I can't wait to read it. I'm gonna give a da bomb to streamer Faker for donating all all of his October revenue to charity. I love when high profile gamers do this kind of stuff, and and Faker does this quite a bit actually. This isn't just like a random thing. So da bomb there uh, from the viewers. Hellsworth says da bomb to Pathfinder Kingmaker. Someone should actually make some online version of these games. There is a market opportunity here, and this is actually another of a sequence of games on a trend that re-emerged with Divinity Original Sin a few years ago, if I recall correctly. I love Divinity. I agree with you there. Go ahead, uh, Jason. Someone should make Pathfinder online? Huh. huh. Gosh, what an idea that hmm. would be. Hmm. <laughs> now, speaking of early access, that is a game that charged a sub-fee in early access. Yep. <laughs> right. Oh my yep. god. <laughs> Shockingly, it failed. No one could have predicted that. Anyway, uh, Lurch says... Didn't they already claim once the Bless was going to be a free-to-play title? They didn't. They didn't claim it as far as the Western release, but other versions, like the Russian version and stuff like that, they were free to play. So we initially assumed that it's going to be free to play right. here. But and they it, very much said it wasn't going to be free to play because they didn't want to be tempted. Right. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, good game, El Rockless OPGG. <laughs> what a it's name! It's longer to read the name than it's going to be to read the comment. <laughs> right. Yes, to reach 56th level in BDO, you just move from grind spot to grind spot. You don't even need gear to do it. You get your first gear to reach end game at level 10, as long as you got enough silver to do it. About four to five million you earn that easily enough. It has a weak story as it is, but grinding to level 56 is just four to five hours work just killing endless waves of mobs. Yeah, so I, a lot of people chimed in on us asking about that whole promotion with mm -hmm. BDO to get it free. Like, do you really just have to, like, bypass the story and blow through it to get to the quest that you need to unlock the free copy of the game during that trial? And the answers were kind of all over the board. Uh, like, Good Game here says, hey, it's just a few hours. Somebody else broke down their, their whole path. Uh, to do it and how many days it took them. Generally, I think the dividing point was if you had friends in game. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people indicated that if you had friends in game, you could be blown oh. through this stuff. So, but but even then, it's like okay, here are yeah. our, to get the game free, you have to yep. do this. It's like, do I really want four to five hours of just grinding endless waves? Is that that how you introduce me to the game? It's like, hey man. Save you ten bucks. Uh, <laughs> Asriel Sword says, save me, "Save me the space on my hard drive too, so I'll uninstall it right after." Asriel right? Sword says, "Now Troy is out of excuses on that bless online." <laughs> LOL. You, I think you still have to do the bless video, Troy. The independent of yeah. the first look. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that's but the it's just the longer you wait on this, the better it's getting, though, because you're just given <laughs> so much fodder. Dude, you have no idea. I have so much stuff bookmarked. <laughs> And it's so much better than it was when I very first said I was going to do that video. Like, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it three years from now. Go ahead, Jason. Yep. Uh, Duder39 says, Bless Online should have been free to play from the start. BDO will follow soon, too. This event kind of hints it. Uh, uh, BDOs is one I'm just surprised it's not already. Uh, yeah, I, I think B Duder's right, though. I think it's, it's going to go free to play shortly. I think they're done milking the $10 as much as they can. Mm -hmm. So might as well make it free and get some more people in there. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, dub bomb to Quentin's bird who provided us with two hilariously random moments. It's from Etherville and Q getting uh, dive bombed last week. Uh, Yami Kami brings back the dub bomb and gives a dub bomb <laughs> and an A bomb for Dauntless. Dub bomb because they introduced a new weapon and a ranged to boot. And A bomb says because this weapon uh, has now weight to it. Monster Hunter style games, of which these are two, are about killing giant monsters with giant weapons. And these mini pea shooters ain't gonna cut it. Please back to the drawing board and come back once you make a rocket launcher out of it. <laughs> Go ahead, Jason. Jack Bandit says dub bomb for the NHL episode. Yep. Yeah. And also another dub on for mentioning the Coyotes. Poor Coyotes never get any recognition. Oh, how are they doing this year? I love the Coyotes jerseys. I'll say that much. I love their jersey. I think it's nicely designed. Uh, go ahead, they Troy. Are one, they are one and four. They are there uh, off the bad start. <laughs> Chris, everyone is playing. Is this L2 Classic? Lineage 2 Classic, yeah. Lineage 2 Classic. That's what I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. Uh, 12K players in both new servers. Whoops. Uh, Whoops, <laughs> they added a third one. Let's so talk about that next time. I'm not asking, I'm demanding. Just, just kidding. <laughs> All right, well, we just talked about Lineage 2. 
go ahead. J-. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I actually downloaded. Funny story. I downloaded it before I read this comment because I wanted to check out Classic a little bit too. Uh, I didn't play Lineage 2 all that much, so I figured Classic was a nice way to jump into it uh, and kind of experience what it was like back in its heyday. And uh, scrolling through the web page, Jason, the very first little thing on there is Classic Nostalgia Grinding. And I was like, oh, Jason would love this website. <laughs> I mean, this is just the way they advertise. Now, maybe you Lineage people can help me because I haven't gotten an answer to my support ticket. I downloaded it. I installed it. I have an NC account and everything for obviously Wildstar mm-hmm. and Blade and Soul and Ion and uh, and I thought I had a Lineage 2 account somewhere. I was totally fine with starting over. It didn't matter. I was going to on Classic anyway. But it's just an exit button. Like, I can't... The, I log in. It launches. The splash screen comes up. And there's an exit button. And that's it. <laughs> on the right, I have, like, new account, can't find account, and links that take me to, to play NC, which they're not English sites. So I like I issued a support ticket. I'm, how, can I Can mm. I play the game? So we'll have to see. Uh, Cyclone Panda says getting to 56 in BDO is a challenge. So Panda thinking a bit differently than our previous viewer. For one, you have to know the right grinding spots. Two, you have to have decent gear to grind those later grinding spots. So getting to 56 will take a newer casual player, depending on the class they pick, uh, two, will most likely take at least four to six days going at a fairly fast pace, maybe even more. You can get one to 50 in like a day or two. But after that, if you don't have the best AOE grinding class and you don't have great gear, I don't see a new player getting to 56 in the the allotted time. So kind of feedback was all over the board on that one. <laughs> That's another point to bring up is all the people talking about this saying, oh, it's easy to get there. They're experienced players probably. So they know where the best classes, best grinding spots. Whereas if you're a brand new person, you don't know any of that crap. So no. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, question of the week last week. Now it's time for you free to play to play to play players to decide with all the changes since launch, has Bless become interesting enough for you to download when it becomes free to play later this month? Why or why not? And we're running l- l- uh, low on time here. Mega Bondage Freak put a lot of good feedback that I wanted to read the entire thing. Uh, however, due to time constraints, I'm going to have to cut it, but Bondage Freak, I love your name, by the way, and uh, I was going to include your entire comment here, but I've got to edit it to the last paragraph uh, talking about uh, Jason, in fact. Uh, mm, yeah. Mega Bondage Freak's entire point of, of view came more from uh, game development and game design and giving NeoWiz a little more credit than most people do for taking some risks, doing things differently when it came to things, uh, despite maybe it not being popular to do so and things like that. And so appreciating that they were willing to do that um, and giving them maybe a little more credit than most people would. And so Mega ends by saying that being said i don't think this game's the best game ever or even that awesome and amazing why i'm interested in this title is because of how how of jason is acting (laughs) he literally laughs at this company for trying to do something he's so engrossed in his negative idea of the game that i think he would overlook it even if it had been better at launch i bothered getting an education in games design so seeing how audiences react to games is something that interests me greatly I'd love to see an exploration into how this game's launch failed from Jason just to see if he finds anything that might turn his opinion around. Uh, the answer to that is no. I'll save Jason the answer. <laughs> I don't. I think Troy and Jason are too far gone at this point, Bondage. They're gone. Jason, I'll let you take the next one. <laughs> All right. No, yes, you can should. reply. Come on. No, I wasn't going to no, let no, you no. not reply. Go ahead. Well, the thing is, okay, you got to do education in game design. I've actually worked as a PR rep for various companies, various game companies. When you're telling them straight up, basically lies, like, oh, we're t- we won't want to be tempted to pay to win. We don't do free to play. And you know, when you're saying stuff like that, you're, you're just you're just BSing. Like, I, I recognize BS very easily because I used to write some of it, I'll be honest. So that's what I look at. When you, when you say something that's such a transparent statement that's so obvious for anyone to see through, that's when I get pissed off. I frankly, I have no idea what the game is like. I've never played it. It might be a game I'd really love to play and be around in, but the no, fact that you they're... Wouldn't. Okay, but the fact I know what so you like. This, this ain't it. <laughs> so dishonest and inauthentic in their talk, that's what pisses me off. Plus, putting me aside, the game started with whatever, 30,000 people on launch day and now has about 500. So my impressions don't have a whole lot to do with that. The fact that it's declined to that extent 
probably means a lot of other people don't think it's good either. So I just have visions of history of the world part one. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Stand up philosopher. Ah, bullshit artist. <laughs> um, go ahead, My Jason. No, okay. Gessler says, hello, love your and Jason's relationship. Keep joking, Jason. Aw, see, I got the hate guy above and the love guy below. Uh, this time I had extra fun for your cast because I'm I in the hospital. I don't I don't like that Gessler feels like Jason and I are in a relationship. Well, Mike, I did send you that Valentine's Day card. That is true, and it was pretty sweet. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I do got to give credit where it due. It was very tender. Did you see the picture inside? Did you like how I was wearing the phone? I didn't want to bring that up. That was, I thought that was a private moment, but whatever. No, you're right, you're right. I, should, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Uh, this time I had extra fun from your cast because I'm in a hospital and had something good to listen. So big thank you. Sorry about that, Gessley. Hope you feel better. Uh, I, yes, sent, I, I sent Gessley an email saying the same from everybody at MMO okay, Bomb. Great, yeah. great. Yes, I will download and play a bit of Bless to Fallout 76 comes out. I refunded my pack from Bless Online like everyone else, but I'm interested more to try it out if items in my Steam inventory, which refunds did not take away, like 30 days premium time, stuff like that, uh, works than the game itself. Mike, don't you have those items as well? Last time I checked, less than a month ago, I still have them. Uh, it's hard for me to answer that, Gessley, because as a result of the free-to-play conversion through the PR department, I was given other keys for one of the other founders' packs uh, to distribute to Troy and I to do the first look video. So I don't know what may be left from the original founders' pack I bought or what has been applied because of the founders' pack they supplied me. Uh, maybe. I have no reason to doubt you, but it would be hard for me to parse which was which without comparing it to the Founders Pack lists, which, frankly, I don't feel like doing. Go ahead, Troy. Pin Lion will not try bless. Why would I put time into a game which will be shut down in a year and from a publisher which makes area games look good? Might actually have tried it if they had released free-to-play under area games. I forgot about that. That was like a big story mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. It was like when area games leaves you... Dude, yeah. Maybe when, things when they decide are... they don't want to publish a game. <laughs> right. Maybe like, who, are... who hasn't abandoned Plus by now? You got Area, you got oh. Russia, you've got Japan. It's like uh, noob GTFO to mommy says company of scammers looks like there's already tons of pay to win stuff in loot boxes. So I'm gonna go with that's a no. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Chris Baker says question of the week. No, I will not bless. I will not bless them with my presence. Yeah. <sighs> Thanks, Chris. Go ahead, Troy. Nordic Noob, I am not planning on going back to Bless. It was a huge disappointment because they cut content from what it was in Korea. That's true. We're going to get it back someday. Uh, Squeezy it's says question. That long. Right? As question. a DLC. God, you guys. Question of the week. <laughs> Squeezy <laughs> says no, no, and no. Why would I spend my time downloading Bless? NeoWiz might shut the game down before I'm even finished downloading. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't understand why someone would download Bless at this point. The game failed miserably as free-to-play in other regions and then failed as buy-to-play on Steam and is being forced into free-to-play again. The only success Bless had was in profiting on the early access by selling a failed game. They spent zero monies in developing a new game and didn't even bother fixing old bugs, not to mention their server problems, and their new content is just previously withheld content. So I'm going to go with a no there, too. Go ahead, Jason. No pause button says, I always had a slight interest in Bless Online, but not enough to actually put money on it. I actually commented a while back on the WoW gaming forums, and once it went free to play, I would give it a try, and here we are. Yep, now you're locked you got, in, pause button. Gotta, you got to keep to your word, man. got to keep to your word. Download it, let us know. Troy, finish it off. Metal Steel, going free to play, won't save Bless. They're already running on loans. They better just quit now before going more into debt. Oof. So generally, most were no's, and that seemed to be the case across the... And that does not bode well. When you look at the comments on a free-to-play website's free-to-play weekly podcast based on free-to-play MMOs about your free-to-play MMO, and most people say they aren't going to try it on that forum, that's probably not boding too yeah, well. Because as a whole, the community seemed pretty excited for that game, definitely. So... <laughs> Question of the week this week, 
What is ZeniMax working on? And more importantly for this show, will it be free to play? I want to hear your guesses in the comments below. While you're there, make sure you leave your weekly bomb, dub bomb for something awesome, a bomb for something terrible, or just your general feedback or feelings that you want us to talk about and put on the next week's show. If you've got questions for the panel, put them down there as well, and I'll bring them to the guys and gals, and we can get them answered for you. Until next week, Troy, where can everybody find you, sir? Uh, twitter.com slash noob fridge where i'm about to go on a big blast rant because i'm fixing to have to fire it up for the first time <laughs> jason <laughs> on twitter at winter informal where i am not ranting about bless not yet but maybe maybe next week or so and on twitch at twitch.tv slash jason winter I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally on Twitter right there at MagicMan1. But more importantly, while you're there, follow at MMOBomb so you get tweets on all the latest news, articles, first look videos, free to play cast, giveaways, and more. Until next time, gang, stay safe, and we'll see you on Bless's servers. <laughs>